Hi everyone. So in uh, the previous video, I talked about uh, explaining some of the, you know, not necessarily periodic properties, but just some of the reasons why elements are grouped together and why some elements are inert. For example, like the noble gases, and why some elements tend to form certain types of ions, like a plus one cation for all the group one A elements and uh, negative one cat uh, anions for all the group seven uh, A elements. Okay. So now what we're going to do is actually go in into talking about some of the different trends that we observe experimentally with uh, certain properties and we're going to try to explain why these trends are observed based on quantum mechanics. One, the first trend that we want to talk about here is listed here is the trends in ionization energy. So we're going to first talk about what ionization energy is. Um, and then we're going to talk about how to explain a trend. But before we actually talk about all of these different trends, I want to start by just saying that all of these trends you could really explain if you understand the uh, energetics of the electron in the atom or the ion. And remember that the energy of the electron is given by this equation, where En, which remember is what we call the binding energy, is the energy that's holding the electron uh, to the nucleus, in the atom, that binding energy is equal to negative of the Rydberg constant times this quantity right here, which is the Z effective, the effective nuclear charge, which is uh, affected by the actual nuclear charge, the Z, but also the amount of shielding and orbital penetration that a particular electron can experience, divided by N, which remember is the principal quantum number. So this is a constant, so that's not going to affect the value of E sub N or the binding energy, but what's going to affect the value of the binding energy obviously are these two terms right here, the Z effective and the principal quantum number. So what you'll see is as I go through the explanation, I would rely uh, a lot on understanding what is going on to Z effective uh, as well as what's going on to the principal quantum number as we um, try to explain the particular trend in uh, a property. Now, the change in the value that we observe, whether it's an increase or decrease uh, of your property, you know, whether it's ionization energy, electron affinity, or, or whatnot, can usually be attributed to the change in one of these things, which affect the Z effective and the N. And one is the change in the atomic number itself, which is just the Z. So it's just the change in the number of protons we have in the nucleus. The second is the change in N itself, which is the principal quantum number, or we often call this the shell. And there's also um, important uh, effects that you can observe with regards to orbital uh, shielding as, as well as penetration. I mentioned penetration specifically here because there are certain exceptions that we'll see that's due to penetration. And remember the idea of electron penetration is that a, an s orbital of a given shell is always more stable than a p orbital of that same shell. So if it's a 2s versus 2p, the 2s is always more stable. The electron in 2s is always more stable and the reason is because of this penetration effect. Um, one of the things also I want to note is that um, the periodic trans is powerful but they don't explain everything. So if you're looking at a, uh, you know, if, if you're looking at a particular property, you'll see that the trend is probably applies to you know 90 percent of all the elements that we have however there's about 10 percent of them where the trend is violated okay so in other words the elements behave in a way that is opposite from the trend or different than what we expect from the trend so these are what we refer to as the exceptions and what we're going to do is try to take one or two of these exceptions and explain them. And you'll see that if you understand quantum mechanics, and this, again, this idea of this equation right here, you'd be able to make reasonable explanation as to why we see these uh, exception to the periodic trends. Okay, so now I'm going to start by talking about our first uh, property that we're going to uh, analyze which is ionization energy. Before we actually talk about the trend, I want to just give you a brief description of what ionization energy is and then give you some examples of um, ionization energy values and what electron is removed as a result of having that particular ionization energy. So 
the first thing to real uh, to just kind of talk about is what is ionization energy. So this is the definition, which is the energy needed to remove an electron from an atom or an ion, and all the species are ga gaseous in this case. Okay. If you think about this definition, energy needed to remove an electron from an atom or, or an ion, the value of the ionization energy is exactly the opposite of the value of this binding energy that we talked about. Because remember, the binding energy is the energy that's holding the electron to the um, nucleus. If we want to remove um, the electron, in, in other words, we want to ionize that atom, right? we want to take out that electron, we have to put in an energy that's equal but opposite in value right from this uh, opposite in sign I should say from from this value right here so if this thing is 500 kilojoules uh, in terms of you know negative 500 kilojoules which is that's how much energy is holding the electron in order to remove it we have to put in 500 kilojoules of energy so if you remember that's exactly the type of um, discussion we talked about when we talked about the photoelectric effect. So it's really useful if you go back now and think about the photoelectric effect because what we call the work function in the photoelectric effect is really, uh, in terms of concept, is very similar to what the ionization energy is, the energy needed to take out uh, an electron from a particular atom. Uh, in this case, you know, again, it doesn't have to be a metal. The photoelectric effect refers specifically to metals, but for ionization energy, it could be any atom. So this is a broader, broader term, but in terms of concepts, very similar to the photoelectric effect. Now, because the ionization energy is the energy needed to remove the electron, and the electron is being held by the nucleus, remember that there's a strong electrostatic uh, attraction between the nucleus and the electron that means that to remove that electron you have to put an energy and if you have to put an energy to do anything that means the process itself is an endothermic process and the value of the ionization energy is always positive um, now how are the electrons removed you know if you think about logically what's going on the electrons is going to remove to be removed from the easiest one, in other words, the one that is the least stable, the highest energy electron, towards, and slowly we go sequentially to the more and more stable electrons. Okay, so you're always going to start by removing the electrons that is highest in energy, and then go to the second one, the one a little bit lower in energy, and then go to the third one, which is a little bit lower in energy, and so on. Okay, so let's take a look at a quick example here for aluminum. The aluminum atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p1. That's the uh, electron configuration, right? So I can remove, you know, a lot of different electrons, but if you think about it, if I put in the energy um, to remove the electron, the electron that is easiest to remove would be this 3p electron right here because that's the one that is furthest away from the nucleus it's a valence electron but not only that the 3p electrons 3p is less stable than 3s so as a result it's easier to remove the 3p electron so those factors combine to make the 3p electrons being the first electron to be removed so the reaction itself the process itself will be written the following way you're going to start with the aluminum atom in the gas phase it becomes the aluminum ion plus one in this case in the gas phase plus an electron because the electron has been ejected out from that aluminum atom okay the energy needed for this process to happen is what we call the first ionization energy for aluminum this corresponds to a value of 578 kilojoules per mole now again I want to talk about what electron is being ejected in this case this what corresponds to your 3p electron okay you can continue this process by taking out another electron, ionizing another electron, so that would then be written as Al plus going to Al2 plus plus electron, okay, all in gas state still. This would be referred to as the second ionization energy because this is the second electron you're removing. And you notice that the value now goes up to 1817 kilojoules per mole and this would correspond then to one of those two 3s electrons that you have in aluminum now you can ask the question here why does this energy go up now why does it go up from about five you know 600 to about 1800 in other words it triples okay 
think about this what's going on you initially have aluminum has a, a Z or atomic number of 13 right in other words it has 13 protons when you remove the first time you remove this you have 13 protons with 13 electrons this one being the furthest away from it so there's a certain amount of attraction that this particular electron is experiencing from that 13 protons once it's been removed which corresponds to this energy now you have the rest of the these guys now remember this is also still in the third shell however it's 3s is a more stable orbital compared to 3p so first off you're going to expect that you're going to need to take put in quite a, you know, a, 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 some, some more energy in order to remove a 3s electron in comparison to a 3p electrons, okay? But not only that, the attraction per electron, the attractive force per electron al also has increased because before you have a uh, 13 protons to 13 electrons, now you have 13 protons to 12 electrons, right? Because one of the electrons has been removed. So in other words, as an average but you know even if you're talking about the actual force being experienced by these three s electrons it's now more than what it was before because of the removal of the three p electrons and as a result you expect an increase in energy that's needed to remove the electron and in fact that's what we see now the third ionization energy you see here is 2745 that corresponds to removal of the uh, second three s electrons uh, so the aluminum then goes from 2 plus to 3 plus. You notice that here there's an increase in value, but not as much as the first, you know, from the first to second. And again, the idea here is the same. There is, of course, that increase in the overall force felt by this 3s electrons. But if you think about it also, by this point, um, you know, there's no other, uh, 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 sh you know, earlier you had some amount of, uh, uh, other electrons interfering with that but now there is there isn't so then there is an increase but it's really the same it's really still another 3s electron earlier when we see from here to here we see uh, increase in stability because we see a p electron versus an s electron from here to here we're really just comparing two s electrons one of them has a little bit more shielding the other one doesn't but you know that shielding is uh of, is shielding in the electron that's in the same shell so it's not so uh, it's not so dramatic so as a result the increase in value there is some increase obviously we expect that because the electrons uh, you know have 11 electrons sh you know experiencing the plus 13 charge uh, of the nucleus but it's not so big from you know compared to the first to the second now however when you go the fourth ionization energy you notice that the value jumps up by a huge amount from about 27 to about 11.5 okay that's almost a four uh, fourfold increase uh, probably a, a very close to a fourfold increase in in terms of ionization energy and you really at that point you have to ask again why why is there such a huge huge increase well if you think about it right and you should stop the video pro, pro, uh, you know now and really just kind of think about it yourself but if you think about it what's going on of course is when you go from this plus three to plus four you're done with all the third shell electrons now you're going to the second shell and you know the second shell by comparison is a lot closer to the nucleus so if you look at that energy that binding energy equation again your n now instead of three has dropped to two okay and three you know three squares one over nine four squ i mean two squared is one over four one over four is quite a bit larger than 1 over 9 okay so as a result your energy now is a lot larger a lot more stable in other words the electron is held by a much stronger uh, electrostatic uh, attraction and as a result it's a lot harder to remove that electron because you're going now to a much closer distance between you and the between the electron and the nucleus and that requires a lot more energy to peel off you know to peel off that electron from the from the plus three ion okay so this again re, you know corresponds to the removal of a 2p electron at this point you're going to a different principal quantum number so that's why it's so hard to do and it requires so much energy